This short instructional video will show you how to use an eCPM machine. We'll discuss the benefits of the CPM machine, the use of the CPM machine, fitting the CPM machine to your patients, and how to handle situations with atypical patients. A CPM machine is generally used following a total knee replacement, ACL tear repair, tibial plateau fracture, patellar realignment, and several other procedures performed at your facility. The MedCom Group has specialized in CPM therapy for over 20 years, and we're Joint Commission accredited and work hard to ensure your patients receive the care they need. We pride ourselves on having a CPM machine for almost every synovial joint and strive to be your best resource for CPM education, sales, and service. You may have heard mixed reviews about CPM usage. You may have heard that in the long run, a CPM does not change the long-term recovery outcome for patients who receive a total knee replacement. It has been our experience over the past 20 years that if you ask any patient who has been properly in-serviced on the use and benefits of CPM therapy, they will tell you that the CPM machine helped reduce their pain, increase their comfort, and got them back on their feet more quickly. The CPM machine benefits the patient in many ways. Generally, when you have injured a part of your body, it's recommended that you elevate the injury to help reduce the swelling. When you place a patient's leg in a CPM machine, you not only elevate it, but also passively move the repaired joint. The combined effects of the elevation and the gentle motion help to pump the swelling out of the knee. In addition, the gentle motion helps to mobilize the synovial fluid and nourish the joint surface, which also helps to inhibit the growth of interarticular adhesions, or scar tissue. As the swelling in the knee is reduced, pain decreases. A swollen joint presses on the nerve endings, which increases a patient's pain. Studies have shown, and it has been the MedCom Group's experience, that when the CPM machine is applied and the swelling is reduced, the patient's need for pain medication is also reduced. CPM therapy also increases a recovering patient's circulation. This helps increase the blood flow, which helps to improve healing by bringing in fresh blood filled with oxygen and other nutrients. As the swelling and pain are reduced and fresh blood is brought to the repaired joint, the patient's ability to bend the knee increases. As a matter of fact, studies have shown that a patient can leave the hospital sooner when CPM therapy is used due to their increased range of motion. Not only is CPM therapy important in the hospital by allowing patients to become more comfortable and sent home sooner, it's also very important to note that most insurance companies cover CPM machines for at-home use. In fact, Medicare believes in the efficacy of the CPM machine and covers home usage for a total knee repair for a maximum of 21 days. To keep our friends at the Joint Commission happy, we need to touch upon a few safety items. CPM machines generally come with a long cord. When possible, this cord should be placed under the bed. If it cannot be placed under the bed, you must make sure that it's out of the way of foot traffic. A tripping hazard can be eliminated by carefully placing the cord out of the way. Most patients will utilize their CPM machines during the day at intervals. During rest periods, the CPM machine is often removed from the bed. While under the bed is a great place for the cord, placing the actual CPM machine on the floor is not appropriate. This is a serious infection control issue. A CPM machine must be kept off the floor when removed from the patient's bed. A cart or a shelf is an ideal place for the CPM storage while the patient is not using the CPM machine. Some hospitals even use hooks on the wall or own specialty designed CPM carts that make storing their units easier. If you have questions about CPM storage, please give the MedCom Group a call and we'll work with you to find a solution. The components of a CPM machine are the hand control, the orthosis or leg carriage, a power cord, an on-off switch, and the foot plate. The adjustable sliding parts of the CPM machine are used to properly fit the length of the patient's thigh the length of the lower leg, the flexion and extension of the patient's foot, along with adjusting for internal and external rotation. Pad kit application is a major component in patient comfort. Please refer to the MedCom Group's website to watch a short video on proper pad kit installation. 
You may also request a complimentary DVD for your facility. Due to the variety of CPM machines available on the market, the MedCom Group, working closely with physical therapists, has developed a comfortable, standardized CPM pad kit that fits all conventional CPM machines being manufactured today. Once the pad kit is properly installed, the most important part of fitting the CPM to the patient's leg is to make sure the knee bends in the same place as the CPM machine. On occasion, some patients may have an extra heavy dressing following their procedure. When this occurs, you may need to feel for the knee bend by placing your hand in the popliteal fossa region of the patient's leg or the back of the patient's knee. Although it is ideal to have the knee hinge aligned exactly with the CPM hinge, it is acceptable to locate the knee an inch on either side of the hinge on the knee CPM. Adjusting femur length may be one of the most overlooked steps in fitting the CPM machine properly to the patient. It is, however, one of the most important. To properly adjust for femur length, you must determine whether your patient has a short, medium, or long femur. This can be done by visual inspection or by measuring from the patient's greater trochanter to their mid patella. Many CPM machines will have a visual scale on the orthosis itself. This scale is usually in centimeters. If no visual scale is present on your CPM machine, adjust the femur length for three settings, small, medium, or large. If your patient has a short leg, adjust the femur length to its shortest setting. Or, if your patient has a longer leg, extend the femur adjustment to its longest setting. A CPM machine set in the middle range will fit the majority of your patients. You will be able to verify that this setting is correct by looking at the angle of the patient's femur compared to the angle of the femur bar on the CPM machine. The leg should be parallel with this bar as it moves into greater flexion angles. Now that you have the femur adjusted and the knee aligned properly, it's time to adjust the tibia length. This can be done by loosening the knobs located at the distal end of the CPM machine, close to the patient's ankle. Slide the foot plate toward the patient's foot. Then stop when you can slide the palm of your hand between the sole of the foot and the foot plate. It's important to note that if the patient's foot is pressing on the foot plate, this can cause the patient unnecessary pain or discomfort as the machine begins to move. The extra space created by the hand's width makes all the difference in the world. Most modern CPM machines have a pediatric foot plate for very short patients. By following the simple steps outlined in the video, you can convert your CPM for pediatric use. To further increase patient comfort and compliance, you can also adjust the foot plate for rotation and plantar flexion. Usually you can get a good idea for this adjustment by looking at the natural resting position of the patient's contralateral or non-affected foot. It's important to note that some clinicians will want the foot plate adjusted so that the patient's foot is placed in a 90 degree angle. While this position is effective, it's not always the best for patient comfort and compliance. Keep in mind that our goal is to comfortably bend the patient's leg so that they receive the full benefit of the CPM therapy. The final steps in adjusting the CPM machine to your patient is to verify that all knobs are tight and to visually inspect the patient's leg while the orthosis is moving. If you notice the patient's foot lifting out of the foot cup or boot, the femur length is likely too long. If the machine migrates or scoots away from the patient, the femur length is likely too short. Many clinicians will want to place the CPM in a position that makes it parallel with the sides of the bed or perpendicular to the footboard of the bed. While this seems logical and may work for some patients, we find they are much more comfortable if you abduct the affected leg and CPM. Please realize that most people don't sleep with their legs perfectly straight down the bed. Most of us sleep with our legs slightly apart so that our feet are about shoulders width apart. Abducting the CPM will also help to reduce patient complaints about the machine touching sensitive areas in the inner thigh. I cannot stress enough the positive effect that abducting the machine will have on your patient. You will also find that abducting the CPM is the only way to get bilateral CPMs to work. When you do abduct the CPM and the leg, you may find that the bottom corner of the CPM will extend past the edge of the bed. This is okay and will not affect the movement of the machine or the patient's safety. Once you have abducted the leg, you will want to verify that the patient's leg is parallel with the medial and lateral bars of the CPM. If the patient's leg is not parallel with the CPM, the bars and sometimes the knobs on the CPM 
can cause skin irritation on the inner thigh as illustrated in this video. Okay, so you need to realize that your CPM machine is as delicate as your laptop computer. It is, however, much more expensive to replace and or repair. It is crucial that you take good care of your CPM to keep it out of the repair shop and running for years to come. A properly cared for CPM machine can often last well beyond five years. Please be sure to never drop the CPM or its hand controller. Doing so may cause permanent failure. Always secure the expensive hand controller to the machine before moving the equipment. The hand controller is the brains of the machine and is the most expensive piece to repair or replace. We recommend cleaning your CPM machine with a standard disinfection protocol after each patient. First, remove the CPM pad kit and discard it. These are considered single patient use items. Second, spray your machines with disinfectant and wipe them down with disinfectant towelettes. Be sure to remove all tape and other large debris before disinfecting. Over the past 20 years, the MedCom Group has developed several pearls in order for patients and clinicians to get the maximum benefit from CPM therapy. We'd like to share them with you. We have found that patients who use the CPM machine at night while sleeping wake up with greater mobility and have a more restful night. This is true both in the hospital as well as in the home. So keep in mind that flexion may be reduced at night to assist with restful sleep. Studies have shown that 40 to 50 degrees of flexion will maximize the edema reducing benefits of CPM therapy. The MedCom Group recommends using the CPM machine six to eight hours per day. However, consult the physician for his or her specific protocols. The physician has probably ordered physical therapy for the patient as well. If this is the case, it's important that they complete their daily exercises along with using the CPM machine. CPM usage is not a substitute for their exercises. However, the combined benefits of both therapies will help them recover more quickly. When you're ready to return the CPM machine for service, annual maintenance, or because your treatment period is over, please contact your local representative or the MedCom Group's home office at 800-231-4276. We'll assist you with the return. If you're shipping your machine back to the MedCom Group, please refer to the chapter in this video on packing and shipping your CPM for safe return to the MedCom Group's corporate office. Your CPM machine was packed in a custom design box and shipped with packing materials. Please be sure to keep the box and all packing materials. You'll need these when it's time to return the machine. When packing the equipment, please be sure to include the power cord, the hand control, the CPM machine itself, the instructional manual, and the instructional DVD. Please remove and discard the sheepskin pad kit. We don't use them ever again. So there are some contraindications with CPM therapy. One would be unwanted joint motion, Another would be unstable fractures, spastic paralysis, uncontrolled infection, or deep vein thrombosis. If a patient has any of these conditions, we would not recommend using the CPM machine. The MedCom Group would like to thank you for watching this informative video. If you would like more information in regards to the benefits of CPM therapy, further training, or you're in the need of CPM equipment, soft goods, or service, please give us a call or visit our website. If your patients have further questions, please feel free to direct them to the Learn section of our website, where they'll find helpful articles and videos about CPM therapy. If you have any questions, please give us a call. We'd love to help you with your CPM needs.